Alright, so we're joining you mid-flight. We had all this great content, which we'll have to repeat because our audio engineer didn't have the audio recorder on, so all we have is video. Oh, so, <coughs> so we're currently flying to Aiken, South Carolina. We're going down to look at a plane that the uh, high school we're at is thinking about buying. We're just going to give it a quick look. Um, we're probably about uh, what, 35, 40 minutes out. And we had a great discussion, uh, which we'll try to replicate on the way home so you can actually hear it. These things happen. Now that you've been in aviation for a while, have you considered a different airframe? Like, do you, do you find one partially uh, favorable to another, or do you just still really like the Diamond? I like the Diamond. Now, to be fair, I don't have a lot of experience in the other planes, but most people who come to fly with me as a student from other planes really like this plane. Now, some have almost said they think it's too uh, twitchy, is what they call it. Um, and I can see that this is a push rod plane. The ailerons and the, I believe the elevator are push rod. So yeah. when you move the stick, it goes. There's no slack, there's no stretching of cables, it goes. And, um, that's a little bit different for some people. It's extremely responsive. But when the, the features, I was just at Sun and Fun, and um, I looked at all the planes again. And one of the best features of this plane is that back door because passengers can get in and out. I can put golf clubs in there, I can put luggage in there. Um, I looked even at the Cirrus. Well, they do have a baggage door, but the passengers, it's like an old two-door, you know, coupe from the day. You got a bowl in the seat. You gotta, yep. The back door is just one of the best features. And golf clubs, forget it. I don't know if golf clubs will fit in a Cirrus cargo door, but here I can fold down the back seats, just like an SUV or a hatchback, pop them in there, and I'm good to go. <laughs> now, you know, of course, now, even if somebody asked me that, well, if you won the lottery, what would you buy? Like, you know, a jet? Or no, I think maybe a DA-50. I think I'd stay in the Diamond family. Just up the ante. So, uh, at the flight school conference, there was an interesting, um, you know, some of these flight schools only fly Diamonds. And now that they've had them for a little while, they're actually trying to start getting away from them. A, or B, they've been working on stockpiling parts because of these diesels. Uh, the head gaskets have been blowing on right. these engines. And the wait time for these gaskets coming out of Germany has been three months. And that's, you know, if you were to get one of those, you know. That's the only drawback. You, I am you, not a fan of the diesel. I did learn something at Sun and Fun. They have a new term. When you have a diesel, they don't call it TBO, time between overhaul. They call it TBR, time between replacement. And I talked to um, Techno, which uses a Continental diesel. I said, can you rebuild this diesel unlike the Ostrom? He said, no, you're gonna replace them. So I don't know if there's even a brand of diesel you can rebuild at uh, overhaul, which is a big deal. My overhauls, not counting the taken, engine in and out now. I think they're about 35,000. Uh, a new engine, from what I'm being told, is 70,000, so it's twice as much. Unbeknownst to us, um, I don't really follow golf that much. This is Masters Week, and Aiken is uh, very close to Augusta. So there may be some traffic down here. Six up with gear. Descent to maintain 2,100. Uh, Join the final approach for the clock stack. Keep your speed up as much as you can. You're number one. All right, 2,100. Keep speed up. Five, six, six, seven. Six up there. Just let me know if you break out below all the uh, cloud deck and uh, or underneath it all via bar. I should have five, six, seven. Time is six up to Syria. The field. Uh, negative. We are broken out of the clouds, but it's so hazy I can't make out the field quite yet. Diamond 6 Delta Sierra, clear for the RNF approach, runway 25, and uh, cancel with me in the air as soon as practical on this frequency. If you need to cancel on the ground, 126.07. Nobody else can come in or out, so you can. Roger that, clear for the RNF, we'll cancel with you, 5 to 6 Delta Sierra. Diamond 6 Delta Sierra, clear for the RNF, we'll cancel with you, 5 to 6 Delta Sierra. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I'm straight in front of us. Uh, approach 5 to 6 Delta Sierra has the field, we can cancel IFR. Diamond Star 5 to 6 Delta Sierra, thanks, IFR cancellation, receive support via 4. See you later. Alright, have a good day, 5 to 6 Delta Sierra, Squawk VFR. Holy cow. One of the Gulf Streams over there, you got three of them over there. 
look after your land, obviously. Yeah, we got field sight. Uh, we'll uh, keep All right. it down. We'll do it down. One for a left handed landing. Welcome to VFR, take care. All right, let's look. This runway is closed, but let's make sure. Oh, that's why it's closed. They're parking everybody on it. All right, so we had a nice trip to Aiken. <laughs> um, the nice video that we thought we put together on the way down apparently didn't come. We'll try to work on that. The plane we were coming to see was not here. So we're going home. <laughs> not much more to say than that, really. <laughs> That's a, uh, that is the long and the short of it. <laughs> All right, but we did see every private jet in the country apparently is taken this week. All right, that's off. Landing light, strobe light, come around, flaps to take off, fuel pump, full prop, rich, uh, fullest tank is right, and trim is to take off. Aiken traffic, 526, off runway 25, Aiken. A little crown in this runway. It's like it the end of the earth. Coming home from Florida, when you when you fly IFR, you're supposed to monitor the emergency channel. And I determined it's also a good idea to monitor it when you're VFR, because there was a guy flying VFR that had wandered into a restricted area that was hot, and oh. they kept calling on on the guard channel saying, "Hey, whatever his tail number was, you need to turn east immediately. We're in a hot restricted area." And he obviously wasn't listening to it. They called him for a half hour. And I'll bet he got one of those, be ready to take down a phone number when he landed. Holy cow. So I've started now to monitor that. Because right now I'm on Concord Tower. I have no reason to talk to anybody else. But if I do something that's causing a problem, maybe they can get a hold of me. All right, so just to back up, I'm going to try this again. This is AJ. <laughs> He's my a &P. And if and if, I don't know how I'm going to edit this thing, but on the way down we had this great conversation. I thought I recorded it, and the, the equipment was all pissed up. So, what we were discussing was, uh, I've had some comments on YouTube about some of the decisions I've made maintenance-wise in some of my videos. Uh, people have said, well, you didn't need to replace that, you could have overhauled it, or you, you, know, or you didn't need to change that up. But what comes into play is this plane is for hire. Uh, I lease it back to the flight school, it produces income. So that has to factor into any maintenance decision. Um, I did put out a video of replacing a cylinder, which AJ did, and we could have sent it out for overhaul. Uh, I think the quote was like about three weeks to get back. And it was only about $300 cheaper than just buying a new cylinder that we got like in the next couple days. So that was kind of a no-brainer. Two hours worth of flight instruction time right, turn base, uh, would have more than eaten up that difference, and it would, the plane would be down for three weeks. Right. Um, this is the newest plane in the in the rental fleet. Doesn't mean it has the least problems, maybe? I don't know. It seems to have its fair share of problems, but I guess maybe they're different. Uh, being as it's newer, it's a composite plane, and we keep it in a hangar. And I think it's hangar almost its whole life. We don't have a lot of fuselage issues, corrosion issues, things like that. Uh, mechanical, electronic, that's, no plane is immune from that. I, I think electrical has probably been the probably most challenging issue on the plane up to date. Uh, everything else is extremely simple on these planes. Uh, you know, simple like homing engine, all the components are, you know, universally found on any other engine. It's, it's, uh, right. Yeah, 360 is a 360, basically, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, this one, the the to me is the mechanic. Uh, the the best quality of this plane, it 
that it, it's a, a, such a solid structure of composite tree. It, it's, uh, it takes a lot of factors out. Like, uh, obviously vibration is always going to be a factor. But the consequences of vibration uh, factor differently into composite versus aluminum. Would have over time, you get loose rivets that start smoking and chafing, uh, and you panels get panels kind of stretch and push on each other. Yeah, we don't yep. have that. Uh, and, and that could, and that's also a result of you know heat and cold at the same time. You know, you get metal fatigue uh, on those aluminum structures. Is uh, corrosion is another big one. Uh, corrosion in these things is it minimal uh, if, if kept under appropriate conditions. Um, so, it, uh, to me, I think it's got a lot of uh, aiming, redeeming qualities for it. So, when you do a pre-buy, um, and somebody calls you and says, I've got a 1970-172, pretty much tear that entire plane apart to be able to look for corrosion, or you just kind of pop up the, ins uh, the inspection ports and poke around? Because to me, that would probably be the biggest hit gotcha if you bought that plane. You don't know where it's been stored for the past, whatever that is, 50, 60 um, oh, unless you tear the interior out and everything, you really can't see both sides of the skin, can you? But I don't know how far you go when you do like a pre-buy. Do that like so, on a painted, on a painted aluminum structure, uh, will usually on the exterior find signs of corrosion by uh, identifying some of the paint that had, looks like it's starting to boil. It almost looks like it's boiling, and then if you kind of mess with it, it just flakes off and then you'll see this white uh, powdery, looks like powdery, you know, and, and that's your corrosion on the outside. So identifying it on the outside, you know, it, it can be, although it does take a while to get to that state, even though it's already there, it's not always in your face that apparent. On the inside of these aluminum structured birds, uh, Cessnas, for instance, they have a subfloor and you do have to take the carpet up and you have these inspection panels, there's probably 20 of them all through the floor of these Cessnas. And, you know, you got in there with a, a mirror and a flashlight, you got to check on, well, you, you check in the whole belly of, uh, of these Cessnas. Um, you, you know, everybody's very hesitant unless the plane has already been kept inside a hangar and well maintained. Uh, one of the biggest factors you want to ask when looking for an aircraft to buy is where was it and if it was located on the coast you want to make sure it, it was hangered or it has had uh, a preventative uh, corrosion uh, lining put in it uh, you know spray lining that a lot of guys do when they're out on the coast it's just an extra step to prevent it so th that's probably the you know the biggest things on the papers don't have that subflooring. So uh, uh, what your feet are on in the plane is your floor. Oh, really? Yeah, there's no subfloor underneath. Oh, it's just carpet on skin, basically. Carpet on skin, and then there's stiffeners that run across the belly vertically, uh, and, and that's what creates the rigidity there. So, uh, you know, obviously the papers also have that massive I-beam from the, the spar, I kind of call it the leftover spar, that slides into uh, the frame of the piper uh, that has a, that, that receiving uh, structured area is very, very strong. And, uh, and one of those spots, you got to look in there for corrosion in there. But the, uh, my point was that the flooring isn't, isn't that bad on the pipers. So it, it's probably if I was to if I was to choose a plane to purchase, and it was either between a Cessna or a Piper, just for mechanical reasons, I would go with the Piper. You see them right now. So on this plane, now you don't have the corrosion on the the skin or the fuselage or anything. The thing that you have to look at on these is there was also have to do that delamination test. Delam delamination for Where you have to go around yep. and tap on it with a little hammer and listen for what, like hollow kind of sounds? It, it, it actually sounds like a softer thud sometimes. Alright. That's kind of like when you're knocking on the wall. You hit a stud and then you hit between the studs. Exactly. That's exactly right. Yep. 
But overall, for how old is this plane? Now, 17 years old. I think a few little nicks here and there, but I think overall the paint looks pretty good to me. I think the plane looks, paint looks great. Is it, well, that's, I guess that's something too, right? You, you really won't get like oxidation or anything on this kind of paint. This is just like a boat, right? It's a gel coat type paint, I believe. Um, it's not just paint on metal. Uh, and I couldn't say for sure what kind of paint, but you're right. You don't have as many of those factors of uh, you know, oxidizing. Oh, buy a diamond. Over to the deep or, or a Cirrus, I guess. <laughs> Cockroach tower down, 526, still zero, left down, 120. Star 6.0, runway 20, clear to land. Clear to land, 20, taxi, still zero. Current track 355, Concord, runway 20, taxi, Alpha. Cockroach tower, Skyhawk 9672, Victor, 10 miles to the northeast, inbound, full stop with me. Skyhawk 9672, Victor, Concord, straight into runway 20. Straight into runway 20, 9672, Victor. Concord Tower, uh, 525 Juliet Gulf, uh, two miles from Lima on the practice stop. Uh, ILS for 20, full stop, and we have it Yankee. 525 Gulf, Concord, continue.